Last month, Shredder's Revenge mutated a whole generation of gamers back into 10-year-olds. And they can keep riding that nostalgia high and relive some childhood memories with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowabunga Collection. Here to tell us more about what's in store, please welcome Charles Murakami and Chris Kohler. Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, so I'm I'm just incredibly excited to talk about Ninja Turtles with both of you. Yes. I, I understand that you're big fans. I've been excited to work on it for as long as I have. So, so. How, how did this whole collection come together and what's it like getting a bunch of old games and putting them together in a new package? Because it sounds it's... like a nightmare. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah. getting getting the games basically up and running in you know in the engine is the like that's like the first step. You right. know, that's where we start at Digital Eclipse, and then it's like, well, what can we add to this? So it's like all these games, every single game has some level of enhancements, which are optional. You can play it exactly as they were back in the day, or you can add enhancements. Like for the NES games, you know how the sprites used to flicker when there were too many sprites on yes. the screen? Turn that off. You can just turn it off if you want to. Wow. You can you can have you can have as many sprites as you want, you know. Um, for uh, for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tournament fighters on the Genesis, we added the ability to play as the three boss characters, which was not even in the retail game. Like, there's a lot of like enhancements, and then oh, beyond wow. that, there is the Turtles Lair in the game, and the Turtles Lair is where the turtles keep all their secret stuff, such as. Uh, game, the original game boxes and manuals, hundreds and hundreds of pages of design documents yeah, that oh we pulled God. out of the Konami archives. For the They've first never time. been, yeah. for the yeah. first time, they have never been seen before. These, these were pieces of paper that were in a building at Konami that only certain people had access to, and they got the Turtles license back. It's like, great. They were like, what do you want to put in the game? And we were like, Everything, right. every gosh darn thing so, you have. <laughs> so this enthusiasm game. is yes. why I knew to come to these guys for it because originally <laughs> we were doing things like the Castlevania collection, the Cap Contra collection. We Thank had, you for those, by the way. Right? Huge fan, huge fan. Which is great. Yes. And then those had like seven games in it. Yes. And then when the fans asked for a TMNT collection, I wanted all of them. Of course. And of course, the place to <laughs> tackle some, something like all that. All of it. Yeah, and with the passion that they have is, of course, yeah. Digital Eclipse, I knew right away that I, I want to work with them. When I know Digital Eclipse is involved, I know that I'm not going to get some, like, bare bones, surface <laughs> oh, level gosh, collection. No, no, you, no, no. You guys go deep, like like you were yeah. saying. So I wanted to ask you, what was the sort of the toughest game to port to this collection? Like, were there mm. were there technical issues that you ran into with any of them specifically? Like, well, I mean, I think it's it's more difficult to for the arcade games, and that's only because. So I mean, if you think about the Turtles arcade game, uh, player one is always a certain turtle because, right. like, you know, you, you it's based right. on where you stand at the machine. But we, so we had to add, and it was you know it wasn't that hard to do it, but it's like we had to add a thing where you you pick what turtle you want to be regardless of which player you are. So there's stuff like that. Um, also with arcade games, we have we have what's called um, the watch and play mode, which is where you can watch an expert play through the games, all the games, without taking any damage, and you can jump in whenever you want and start playing. So who, you can now you who, can re let, who recorded those? Um, we have one of our one of our producers at Digital Eclipse, uh, basically just like you know um, you know using essentially tool assist, you know, to, to if he took right. damage, rewind, you know, because I mean? we have rewind in the game as well. Um, so he basically just sort of tweaked the, the the gameplay. So when you watch it back, it's basically just it looks like just somebody just playing flat through taking zero damage but with the arcade games if you're too good at them the game punishes you and it sends un it sends like uh, penalty bombs that basically blow <laughs> up on you to kill you for for being too good at the game because it wants more quarters it wants your money so yeah. a we have an option to disable those if you okay. want and b you know he basically had to like figure out like how can i like just barely avoid the bombs or whatever, and you know, it's it's just this. That was a whole thing. The arcade games are are, are a little more complicated than and console. The, and the other thing I asked for was to have the Japanese versions of all the games yes, too. right. And they don't work exactly the same as they a Nintendo don't. and a Famicom. And I know you guys struggled a little bit. Well, you guys got through it pretty quickly. It was it was a surprise because I basically brought it to the engineers and they said, Hey, by the way, the the Famicom versions of these games, which of course we've got to include the original Japanese versions of these Japanese games. Oh yeah, they actually used special chips that Konami right. manufactured by themselves in Japan and our our engine right now doesn't support them so you have to support them. Right. <laughs> so that's this is the, I, I I am like the, always the deliverer of like bad news yeah. you know to people like uh, well historically we have to do this sorry. I, I wanted to ask you you guys an ethical question here. Um, what is the etiquette with getting a pizza power up if you have four players? Because to me, it's always defaulted to who's got you know the, the most amount of damage, the closest to death, right. but other people just steal it. I, so, okay, I'm sorry, I, I know I'm talking a lot, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Charles knows this, but you, you've asked an amazing question uh -huh. because Brian, 
I will tell you right now, we address this in the game. Really? Because there is a feature in Cowabunga Collection, it's called the Interactive Strategy Guide. And okay. it's essentially like having your copy of like Nintendo Power or EGM or whatever, you know, or, or IGN.com, the magazine. Right. You know, you may remember, <laughs> yeah. uh, open while you play the game. And each game has a series of strategies and tips. And so for one of the arcade games we do, um, all the turtles have columns in the magazine that they wrote. And uh, one of them is called <laughs> one of them is called Leo's Leadership Lessons, and he gives you the pizza commandments. And that is, if the player who is lowest on health gets the pizza, yes. Or if you're tied, the player with the lowest number of lives gets the pizza. Ooh, that's a good one. I never thought if about that. If you're totally tied, try to leave the pizza on the screen until the battle is over and see if it resolves itself. Um, and if you can't break the tie, the player using the sticky third-party controller gets the pizza. Do you hear that, everyone? That is that is a very that is from That's Leonardo himself. That is the etiquette. Don't go picking up pizzas when you're full of health, ready to kick ass. You're cheating, and it's 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 unfair for everybody else. So, and so all learn I your lesson. Is, last time we played, he broke all three commandments. What? So, <laughs> I, I don't what, know what do you say? think? You're up here telling people what to do, and you're like, oh yeah, by the way, there's a pizza on the ground. I'm stealing you, it. You neglected to say we were playing on turbo mode oh, in one well, of the games, you know. and things were chaotic, and I accidentally. Commandments are commandments, pizza. man. It's, it's true. true. Well, you had there's and and it says in the game, you know what you what you get to do to a player who breaks one of the commandments, right. which is what a wet willy. <laughs> you get you get to wet willies like in real life. I'm well. I mean, you know, you have to choose whether or not you want to do that. But did the turtles even have ears? <laughs> I'm not. I think they have to, don't they? How sort do they, of. They how have do they like, hear things? They have holes, right? You're thinking of um, like. Frogs? Fish with gills or Fish? something like Fish? that. I think they're pretty, <laughs> pretty sure turtles have ears. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm pretty sure in one of the movies, the turtles give a so, uh, foot soldier a wet willy. So. That's true. That, that's, yes. Yeah. They are able to give, and they have the big that's fingers That's what I'm for saying. It. Everything is historically accurate. And the foot soldier is a robot, so that, figure that out. Very good to know. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, the Cowabunga Collection is coming to PC and consoles on August 30th, and I cannot wait. But in the meantime, we've got tons more live coverage of San Diego Comic-Con ahead. So stick around and give the turtles some wet willies. <laughs>